I have another video here um, regarding our diesel conversion on the 79 Ford one ton. And uh, this is a major, major part of the project. And it's one that's very complex. And that is going through the wiring harness. So first and foremost, if you were doing this project yourself, one of the things you do not want to do when you're removing the engine from the donor rig is just start cutting wires. You want to remove the entire wiring harness out of the engine compartment intact. You don't want to just start cutting things, otherwise you're going to have no idea what they are and you're going to really set yourself up for failure. So what we've done, you see there's a big rat's nest in front of me. Uh, we've been working on this for over the course of about a day now. And we took the wiring harness intact and we purchased all of the factory service manuals for the Ford Excursion. If you were doing a project like this, that's something you just absolutely have to do. Uh, this book alone is just the wiring diagrams for the Excursion. So what I've done is I have the book to reference to and then I've also gone through the book and photocopied key elements that, for quick reference, things like the uh, PCM connector, which is this guy right here. Um, I've also printed off the connector for the injector driver module, which is another major component, and also the um, diagram for the engine harness connector. The other thing I've done is I went to a computer engine service program that gives print-offs of the wiring diagrams of vehicles, and it gives a color-coded full wiring diagram for different elements of the vehicle. So I've printed off all the ones that I would need for this project. Uh, this is very nice because the factory service manuals do not give you color-coded diagrams, and they're just of various systems rather than an overall view like these. Now that I have all my paperwork, I've gone through and tracked down each and every wire's uh, designation. And then any wires that we did not need for our conversion, I've cut them out and pulled them out of the harness completely. Any of the wires we do need, I've labeled them as to where they go and what we're going to do with them. Uh, now, once I finish going through this entire harness, I'm going to remove all the wires that we don't need for this project and then bundle it all up and clean it up so that it's a lot easier to work with. Then this will give us a nice basically plug and play application on our engine to start it up. Um, for other projects, if you were doing something like this, some companies do produce aftermarket wire harnesses that are just a plug and play so you wouldn't have to actually do this whole process. But given that that's not available for our project, we, uh, we're stuck doing this. Um, here what I have in front of me is all the wires from the inside of the vehicle. Uh, there's a lot of key components that are inside there that we needed and I've already gone through that harness, dissected everything out that I needed and eliminated everything else. Um, the examples of this are, this is the uh, OBD2 diagnostics port, so that's what you plug your scanning tool into to see what engine codes you possibly have. Uh, I've also pulled out the throttle pedal assembly. The Excursion was a fly-by-wire vehicle, meaning there was no actual link between the throttle pedal and the engine. It was all done by wire. So we pulled the throttle pedal assembly out also, and it just has this sensor that can tell where the position of the accelerator pedal is. So we gathered up our wiring from that. We also cut out our brake pedal connector and we took our brake pedal assembly out because we're going to use that too. And then also another key element for this was the uh, PAT system. That's the passive anti-theft system. It controls the uh, PCM or interacts with the PCM to stop the vehicle from being started if the improper keys are used. There's actually a chip inside the key that the passive anti-theft system scans each time you start the vehicle. If you don't have the correct set of keys, then it won't start. And uh, above and beyond that, 
the passive anti-theft system is a mated pair with the PCM. So you can't just go pull another uh, PATS out of another vehicle and use it in this one. They won't work together. So that was a key thing that we found that out before getting rid of our donor rig. Uh, this is why I say that if you're going to do one of these engine swaps, you never ever want to get rid of the donor rig until you're finished with the project. But that, uh, that takes care of all our um, wiring for the inside of the vehicle. Now we just have to finish up our outside wiring harness and we'll be ready to plug and play and start up our engine. Last time you saw us, we had the uh, wiring harness all spread out on the bench and we were going through everything wire by wire and uh, labeling it. Now what I've done is I've taken that wire harness and just temporarily installed it in my engine compartment. The purpose of that is I want to just test it, make sure that I got all the connections correct and uh, start up the engine, make sure everything's working. So some of the key things I did was I wired in the PATS module, I wired in my throttle pep pedal so I can make sure that the engine revs up. I've also wired in a couple of indicator lights. Uh, I got water in the fuel, wait to start, and my check engine light. And you'll also notice that I've attached that to my OBD2 port so that if there is a check engine light, I can go ahead and scan it. Um, the next thing I did was I took all my power leads, I have constant power and switched power, and I ran those all into a single wire. This is my constant power lead. I've also attached a fuse into that in case anything's uh, hooked up incorrectly, then it'll blow the fuse and won't start a fire. I also have a uh, switch power lead, and I've ran that over to my battery, and I just have a kill switch here that's going to act as my ignition switch. Um, this may look like a big rat's nest and like it's really complicated, but once you've gone through all the wires and tagged everything, it's a lot simpler than it really looks. So now, uh, once I've hooked everything up, I'm ready to go ahead and test fire it and make sure everything's working correctly. Before I do that though, I make sure to uh, always have a fire extinguisher on hand so that if anything goes wrong, I can immediately put a fire out. Okay, I'm ready to go ahead and start up my engine now. Uh, I've hooked up this starter button for ease of starting. So I'm gonna go ahead and energize the system. Let the fuel pump pressurize and just watch my wait to start light. And as soon as that goes out, we can fire this up. All right. looks like we've connected everything correctly. Uh, it sounds like it's running really well. So the next thing uh, we need to do is go ahead and do the entire vehicle's wiring harness. And at that point, we'll go ahead and clean all these wires up and make it look nice. Mm -hmm. 